Chapter 10 Mrs. Little and Granny Little were still in the living room when the other Littles hurried in. Lucy, said Mrs. Little, I thought you were in your room. What happened, Will? Why is Lucy with you? Mr. Little told his wife what had happened. Lucky for us, Lucy decided to follow me when she did, he said. I still can't believe it. She attacked that huge cat. He shook his head. It's amazing, said Uncle Pete. Absolutely amazing. We were pinned under the logs, Mother, said Tom. I never got a chance to shoot my bow and arrows. What are we going to do about that cat, said Uncle Pete. Never thought they'd get a cat to chase the mice. We're safe inside the walls, at least said Mr. Little. That monster won't be able to get us here. That's the problem of getting supplies, said Uncle Pete. We'll have to leave the walls for that. I think I know how we can get rid of the cat, said Mr. Little. How, said all the Littles. By getting it in trouble, said Mr. Little. We can pull down the curtains for one thing. The newcomers would blame that on the cat. We can keep spilling its milk. At night, we can make loud cat noises to keep the newcomers awake. We can even knock over lamps so they would think the cat did it. Pretty soon the newcombs would think they have the wrong kind of cat. They'll want to get rid of it. Everyone agreed that Mr. Little's plan was a good one. During the next few weeks, the newcombs came to believe that their cat was clumsy and noisy. One day the cat seemed to knock over the lamp. Another time the newcombs were half awake half the night listening to meowing. It was really the Littles making the terrible racket. The day after the curtains in the dining room were pulled down. What do we do tomorrow, Dad? asked Tom. May I spill the cat's milk? That's good, yes, said Mr. Little. It should be done two or three times in a row, though. Then Mrs. Newcomb will get an awfully tired of cleaning it up. There's only one thing wrong with this plan, Will, said Mrs. Little. I don't know why you say that, said Mr. Little. Everything has worked perfectly so far. What's wrong with the plan? The cat's still in the house, said Mrs. Little. Don't worry, said Mr. Little. It won't be here long. Mrs. Newcomb must be mad as a wet hen by now, said Uncle Pete. The next day, Tom had a close call. Just as he was lifting the cat's milk dish to spill it for the third time, the cat showed up. The huge animal came bounding toward Tom. At the last moment, Tom upset the milk dish under the cat's nose. That stopped the cat long enough for Tom to get away. This plan of yours is too slow, Will, said Uncle Pete. We're going to have to do something else before the cat gets one of us. What can we do, said Mr. Little. We need larger weapons, said Uncle Pete. I don't know if that's the answer, Uncle Pete, said Mr. Little. Besides, that takes time too. You're right though, this plan isn't working. I heard Mrs. Newcomb telling Mr. Newcomb not to get rid of the cat. She's afraid the mice will return. And she likes the cat, Mr. Little went on. Thinks it's cute and says it's high-spirited. Not only that, said Mrs. Little, we can't break up everything in the house just to get rid of the cat. It's the big's house, after all. Why don't we try taming the cat, said Tom. What, said Uncle Pete. Let's see if we can tame it, repeated Tom. Cats have been friends to men since the early days of history. Uncle Pete looked from Mrs. Little to Mr. Little. Do you hear what the boy's saying, he said. He's gone soft in the head. No kidding, Dad, said Tom. It's true. The early Egyptians thought cats were gods and had them all over the place. They did, did they, said Uncle Pete. Where did you hear such nonsense? I read in one of the big, big history books, said Tom. Uncle Pete snorted. A cat's never been a friend to a little, I can tell you that. Maybe that's because none of them ever tried to tame a cat, said Tom. They were afraid of cats. What kind of silly talk is that, boy? said Uncle Pete. Look at the size of that beast. Who could tame such a monster? Men tame elephants, said Tom. Tom has an interesting idea, said Mr. Little. Perhaps we're worried too much about the size of the cat. Because we're so small, we've always thought that all large animals were all enemies. Maybe that's wrong. I don't like the way this talk is going, said Uncle Pete. It's against everything the Littles believe. Making friends with a cat is like making friends with a rattlesnake. Tom is saying it's not the same thing, said Mr. Little. Cats are friendly to men. Rattlesnakes are not. None of the little spoke. Now, we may be a little, said Mr. Little, but we are men. Of course we are, said Uncle Pete. 
He looks sideways at his tail. We're not animals. Then why can't we have a cat around the house just like other people? Of all the silly ideas, said Uncle Pete. Oh dear, said Mrs. Little. It sounds all right, but I don't know. Why, it's a wonderful idea, said Granny Little. It's so simple. Simple-minded, said Uncle Pete. Why didn't someone think of it before, said Granny Little. Because it's a cuckoo idea. That's why, said Uncle Pete. Now see here, Peter Little, said Granny. Mind your manner, she stood up. Her ball of knitting yarn fell from her lap. It rolled between Mr. Little's feet. I've lived a few more days than you have, and I know a few more things than you do, too. Mr. Little picked up the ball of yarn. He tossed it gently in the air a few times. We could start taming the cat by giving her a present to show that we mean to be friendly. Give her something to play with, said Tom. How about that ball of yarn your father is fiddling with, said Granny Little. Don't cats like to play with things like that? As a matter of fact, Granny, they do, said Mr. Little. Will that make her friendly, said Mrs. Little. It might help, said Mr. Little. We could roll a bar ball of yarn at the cat to see what happens. All we have to do is make sure we have room to get out of the way if she doesn't get the idea. I'm against it, said Uncle Pete. Too dangerous. Cats are cats. You can't change them. There's a large ball of yarn in the big sewing basket, said Lucy. I lifted it once. It's lighter than anything. We'll get it, said Mr. Little. I think it's worth trying. He looked at Uncle Pete. That is, if no one else has better ideas. Count me out, said Uncle Pete. I'll stay here and sharpen my sword.